check that he put everything up. The rest of them, I'm going to scan them all and so we can have them. We have a, our concept art directory. You know, in theory, if all the puzzles were done and the things were decided on, we could actually make a pretty functional game with really rough art um, early on to, to sort of unblock the puzzle design or implementation and uh, some of the systems work, which would be nice. I'm not sure. I'm a big fan of working that way, but I'm not sure if we'll be able to do it for this project or not. We'll have to see how, how that works out. If you're always showing this board, won't that get spoilers from the board? Mm -hmm. So just to bring this up to date, I need another location for the cloud nest. Things that came up in the art jam. Cloud nests. You can tell that that's going to look awesome. The first thing Peter mentioned, too. Yeah, I think he drew that the first day. And then the other one is the um, dead eye pyramid. Why is it dead eye? Spoiler. Can't tell you. I have to play the game to find out. These things all still work, but maybe this becomes his story. The monster lands move over here. Maybe that moves over there. What I still <sighs> am not clear on is, and I don't know if you are, is. Um, switching back and forth between these stories and how we're going to handle that. Yeah. I've been putting that off. Yeah. So let's start thinking about it. So I'm just wondering then, like, if I'm here, here, and here, and I jump back to this, then what, what's the world like? Like, why can't I do this? And what happens that makes me so I can do this? I don't know. I don't know yet. Yeah. I've been a little behind. It's frustrating because I, um, uh, when the team is waiting for you, that's always frustrating. So it's always been that way. Like having an absolutely terrifying deadline is the only thing that um, makes me get it done. There's just so many other things going on at the company right now to, that, um, you know, the cave is getting to this point where it needs, you know, it has a dialogue deadline of its own, you know, and do I help with that or do I work on this game? Okay. <laughs> Peter McConnell's here today. It's fun to see what he's going to add to it. So the game. Uh huh. You see, we did some art already. We had Art Jam, Peter Chan, and Scott Campbell, and Nathan uh, came to town and hung out with Lee and did some art. And that's cool. And that corkboard is kind of up to date. I could add some as we talk. But um, if we're doing a point and click graphic adventure, I don't know if you heard that. Very cool. Yeah. So it doesn't have a high concept in terms of like a heavy metal fantasy world or the Day of the Dead. It's right. really like a new world that we're making up based yeah, on, on Nathan Stapley's art. You know, just having that cool look and having it be about um, themes that are different maybe than. No, yeah, I, a couple questions. Um, There'll be no questions during this meeting. Oh. <laughs> is Peter excited McConnell yeah. excited to be on the project? Yeah. You're asking me if he's excited? Yeah. Um, I think so. We've always enjoyed working together. You know, he's worked on everything I've done since Day of the Tentacle. Monkey 2. Monkey 2. He's like your Danny Elfman. What? He's like your Danny Elfman. He's like he's my Danny team. Elfman. He can do Danny Elfman if you ask him to. I'm just thinking about instruments, you know. I'm thinking about styles. And I'm probably going to have to think of quite a bit about it because it's... I mean, I have some things that are popping into my head. I don't, I don't know if, if, if they're probably way jumping the gun at this point. But um, what comes to mind about, about a world where, where um, things are being made for you and, and uh -huh. it's like a playroom a little bit is, is, is a music box. Uh -huh. 
um, and uh, you know, a little bit like Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, which it also has that repetitive quality to it, because the game is going to start in this like that his routine is the same every day, even though it's drastically different. It's really like he wakes up, the robots dress him, you know, the arms just come out of nowhere and make him dinner, mm -hmm. food, and. And then when he busts out and he's doing actual '90s it's TV a little more space epic. adventure, that it would be, or or 2001, like um, yeah, yeah. And then 2001 would be, 2001 is it will be hard to do, um, you know, without a great big orchestra, and I don't think we have that. But I don't think you know, it doesn't. And now it's like a little more like you now we're running our own actual budget. It's like we have a certain amount of money in the budget for Peter, which means a certain amount of time, and we have to like wait until we're, re we're ready for him to be really effective and working. So we've got to be at a point where we can just tell him, here's a list of characters that need themes, here's a list of areas, because he's got to spread out his time so he doesn't just score the first two acts and then run out of time. So he's got to like spread it out, look at the whole game, think about the gameplay, and think about how much of that money he should save to pay for things like live musicians, studio time. Yeah, well, I think I think there is going to have to be a signature piece for sure, yeah, and yeah. Uh, and uh, and that is, uh, or you know, or two halves of a signature piece because you got these two mm -hmm. worlds. Yeah, yeah, that too. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how we can handle that too. Like if there's themes that persist in both their worlds, or if you have funny little things to do to connect there too. I think that Pete's going to be able to knock that out pretty easily. Yeah, I think it's more the initial. But then it's the same thing with Tim, you know, that, I mean, you, you go crazy for two days and then on the third day you just kind of come up with something, you know, that's, right. that's how creative magic happens. I mean, I, and I think it's almost like you have to be patient with yourself and not, yeah. not panic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that backer money don't last forever. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. That's, that's not a word, is it? No, we're done here. Yes. Yes. Awesome dialogue. Yeah. Done. Yeah, the last four months we've spent in pre-production mode and it's been kind of an exploratory phase of trying to figure out what the game is and both in terms of design but also then how we're gonna actually make that happen. Um, but yeah, everyone's kind of had their own separate little tasks and um, those are all starting to converge now. So where we're ready to start actually building a puzzle in the engine. Actual production work is awesome. It works. It's gonna go. It could get shipped if this works. Yeah. We'll see how it turns out. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Ray Crook, Double Fine Animator. Uh, yeah, Ray started on the project, uh, and he's been someone who's been at the company since like essentially the beginning. I was excited um, to work with Tim again because. Brutal Legend was the last game that you know we'd worked closely together on, and so I was mostly excited just to work with him. But you know, I knew there would be cameras. <laughs> so, so I'm actually excited to be starting on that. Yeah. You know, the beginning of pre-production is really exciting, and then it seems like eventually it gets kind of like you're just kind of churning. Mm -hmm. You know, let's just let's just get this show on the road. You know, is, is sort of the way that it feels, and that's that's where we are. That was it. That's it. Okay. Awesome. Bye. Tim has picked up. a uh, a puzzle, which we're calling first playable. So these are some of the stuff Peter gave me on Friday, right? And cool. so I think this is the stuff we talked about when he was here, which is the idea of them having this little sacrificial yeah. island, which is awesome, cakes, and the you. But I was still worried about like, okay, put this in game camera mode, game layout mode, that would be kind of blocked up, and. Um, I did this real rough thing, and I just got Peter's revision, right? And so this was the idea of, like, from a game camera, you would be, you would kind of start here. So we could start with a, a pan, and we'd kind of move up, and it would kind of... But yeah, up. it's it's uh, the scene where the main character, the uh, main female character, is being offered up for sacrifice to a monster. Because, like, it could show up just behind a princess, you just see something, like, feet. Like, what the fuck is it? Yeah. You can't see it at all, and then it comes between, like, oh my god, and then it's gone. Like, you just never see it up close until it gets... Just comes in here and like eats that one. Yeah, yeah it's it's going to be a lot of work for sure because it's just a lot of animation and, and cutscenes. So uh, it's going to be a tough one. Hey, so uh, so you're saying for the end of this sprint, it's we're really going to try to get the uh, get the sacrifice uh, feast all set up because that's a thing. Like if if every puzzle is going to have like say five or so new characters, that's like kind of a lot of time. 
Well, and that, and that's exactly why we want to take this to finals because it's just conjecture until we kind of get an area to really know exactly how long. I've, I've made estimates based on our progress. Like there's always this period when you start any game where you're trying to, you're trying to build, you're trying to build something both that like artistically you're like, yeah, that's the right move, that's the right gameplay, that's the right look, but you're also trying to build something um, to get an idea of how long it takes you to build the rest of the game. Now part of that is you need, you need enough information about the rest of the game, like like you know, there's there's always this theoretical idea that you never get. Like the whole game is written, every puzzle is designed. You know, all the art direction is completely done. I've never, in my whatever years I've worked in the game industry, ever seen that happen. Some projects are closer to that than others. Um, so there's a lot of uncertainty at that point. Yeah, sounds good and scary. Uh, <laughs> Vega, why are you so scared? Because uh, I think just because I haven't seen anything like in the game yet, you know, like it's still the lumberjack dude. I just love to see how easy it's going to be to reshape things and put things in and take things out and change things and add things. What you really have to do, I think, is lay the best foundation you can, be mindful of what you're making, and then just be clever as you're making the game. Look for opportunities to save time or to reuse things or to go in new directions that are just more efficient or take some of the lessons you've learned from the earlier areas and adapt your later areas to it. So um, that's, and that's, that's what I try and do and I think most people on the team try and do in any game. Um, she wants to be skinny, right? And look skinny, so maybe it's something that helps her look slimmer somehow? Corset. Yeah. But you could the corset on the buzzer. And then, <laughs> oh wait, that could be awesome. That could be totally awesome. <laughs> that looks so strange. A corset buzzard with a drumstick in his arm. <laughs> this is where I started getting interested. Yeah. I haven't seen like the Maiden Feast thing all wired up yet, but that is in the game, I hear. Have you seen that? I've been out, I've been in meetings. Uh, things are happening so fast. You know what we did so far in it is, you know, we had this sort of layout drawings that we did. And we took those layout drawings and um, cut them up. And you can sort of see things exist in the tool here in, yeah. in Parallax. We don't have the game camera authored or anything. Like, you know, you could rough in the gameplay right now if you wanted to. This isn't the, a, a real monster design. That's not a real bird design. Those aren't real character designs. But they are, you know, they have the um, underlying script components to them. Um, and so, you know, which those you can sort of see here, this is just, if we run the game in the scene at the moment, we don't actually have a main character. Um, so, you know, one could hook up dialogue and have proxy object dragging and all that sort of stuff. So um, that's the biggest thing I wanted to do with it, was, was put enough of it together that Bagel could do some painting and learn from the painting. And if, if the programmers want to script that one first, they can. Mm -hmm. Stuff should go time-wise, like well, at least roughly, right? You need those animations. I think of the yeah. sound guys. That's what they use as well. And that's what well, the we sound, use. but their workflow, all they do is they they take. Oh. A <laughs> well, it is lunchtime. Yeah. 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 So could have been worse. See yourself having a huge workload on this? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we started going through it and figure. I mean, it's 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 Tim Schafer game. Um, he likes characters, and he likes dialogue, and there will be cutscenes. I don't know, I'm not sure what Tim wants for, as far as fidelity on cutscenes, like I don't know. The question is how full throttle are we? Right. <laughs> right. For an animator it's just horrible, but... <laughs> I mean, but what if it puts us through all this stuff in my end? We'll see how much of it we can auto-gen as far as like lip sync and that sort of thing. Um, I just I just hope, you know, sometimes you do something and you think, oh, we'll just automate it, and then you do it, and you're like, oh, that's not going to work. You know, we need to just have you know, artists go in and do this. So this was sort of a test animation that uh, I did yesterday. And so she's stuck in this cake, and then this just shows you um, her turning, just to see what kind of, if we can get a quick turn out of her. And so we already have the composition decided on, so we know um, what the position of each of these characters will be in. So when Bagel did the initial designs, which is here, he took that into consideration. And so we know that she will never have to turn any more than, than what she does right there. Um, just because that's kind of a, a whole new process, the, the 2D animation is something we haven't done here at Double Fine. Um, and we're doing it in a, in a way that is um, similar to how we animate in 3D, uh, so that helps. But uh, that could easily be um, something that's 
a lot more work than we're expecting. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how we're going to handle the tentacles because um, we had talked about maybe doing them purely as flipbook animation um, because we are we don't have we can't have enough joints in this engine to do to like animate them all freely. Is that a special close-up monster? Different than the. We're not, we don't do any special close-up. We do one version for everything, unless we have to do it because it's just a lot more work. Maybe you don't have to joint everything that you don't want to joint, or is it the painting of the details, or is it the mouth shapes and all that stuff? All the above. Um, still working on like our first playable puzzle from the actual game. We kind of bit off a big one, so uh, that's happening now. So uh, you know, when I was creating lists, and, and and I've been working with Lee on schedule, and it's. It's, uh, it's gonna get hairy, I think. And then his overall layout of the area, I think this shows, this shows where it is relative to the village. Okay, anyway, yeah. I think this looks great. So we'll meet with Peter. This is kind of the square, but I, you know, it, it could be a lot bigger, but I wanted to just show what it might look like down a street. I guess I'd like, you know, the, I haven't seen any, I mean, I like the, um, if something was bugging me about those mushroom houses. For one, I hate mushrooms. But two, it's like, oh, mushroom houses, what is that making me think of? And then I thought Smurfs. You know, my only worry about the mushroom town is that if it, if it invokes Smurfdom, you know, because there is that kind of Smurf shape with mushrooms a little bit. Mm. So when I see the big castle as one big mushroom, you know, there's, there's parts, there's, there's shapes of mushrooms that don't evoke that, and there's shapes that do, so it's like just... Like this doesn't really, right? Okay, yeah, um, that, no, that looks more like a... Um, Greg? Yeah? Um, when, when is my last day? August 10th. August 10th. August 10th. Wow, okay, so that we are... It's, uh... Getting there. We're running out of time. Why okay, aren't you drawing so, right now? <laughs> if only scratch the surface, really, by that... So, we'll get more money later and have you back. You know, we got a lot of money, but that money goes a lot of places, and, uh, and it's expensive to run a studio like Double Fine in San Francisco. So there's only so long we can have this many people on the project uh, without running out of money. Uh, and we got to make sure that we make something great in that amount of time. OK. Anything else? Not me. No, no, I'll call you soon. OK, cool. Okay. I'm going to hang up. You guys awesome. have a great rest of the day. Thanks, you too, Peter. Bye. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Right. -bye. Like, I really do like the, all this stuff mm -hmm. and this stuff, and the, that all works, too. I'm, like, I, was, I, I hope I didn't hurt his feelings by saying Smurfs. Sometimes you never like, oh, Smurfs. Think about, like, it's really hard not to offend artists Smurfs. all the time. So. Yeah. But <laughs> that's my only worry about some of this stuff, because, I, I mean, mm -hmm. I like it, but he did go, we, he, like, the very first thing that he'd ever talked about was this Japanese-Scandinavian combination mushroom thing. And so it's really hard to say, like, I like it, but I've never really seen anything else. And except for I did also like some Bagel's crazy geometric weird thing that he was doing, too. That was kind of a unique look for the castle. Yeah, I mean, I know Bagel's got a lot of background to do, but I would like to see if you, could, if you had any ideas about the, the buzzard. So with Bagel, um, yeah, I mean, so ba what we have to do, go, like, what the, I guess we can talk about this in the, in the reviews or review meeting, but Bagel right now, just, just to paint what we already designed for this, just the sacrifice puzzle, will take him this entire sprint. He doesn't. He really doesn't have time for for any concept art at all. He has time to interpret it, like when he gets to like paint it, and that's sort of built into the time. And if we we can certainly do any of that, but it, it comes at the cost of we either need to come up with another solution for painting that. Yeah, the problem with that is that doesn't really solve the problem of like having a game be in, in bagel style. Because if he isn't doing the concept part of it, then it's not really. Well, I, I, mean, I disagree with that. It's his rendering style, but it's not his like. But that's what his painting is. You're not using the content from his painting. You're not using the Bob's well, kind big of, boy. When I talked about like wanting to capture some of the crazy stuff from his fine art show, whether it's a little guy on the table or the woman with the mouth in her hair, like those are more ideas than are about a rendering style. So, like, I wanted to capture some of Bagel's some more surreal ideas in the game concept too, not just not just his rendering style, for sure. Okay, well, then we need to come up with another plan because right now it's not possible. But because I'm torn, because I, I also want Bagel to do concepts, like come up with crazy ideas. That's one of the things I like about his art is that he has these, you know, kind of crazy surreal ideas in his painting. It's not just the, the rendering style of it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was a hard choice. Uh, you know, when Tim decided that he wanted the game to reflect Bagel's style, um, ultimately that means that he's going to have to paint a lot of the game, if not all the game. And um, it's going to be what makes the game have kind of a cohesive feel and uh, and look. I don't see how it could 
it's going to work. So we could either do something like, you know, someone else could render the characters to give them time to do concept design, or someone, I, I don't know, something like that, some hybrid sort of rendering style solution that, that can work in a very similar style. Mm -hmm. right, that's the only, you know, we'll have to figure something like that out because um, there just isn't time for one person to do all that. I love this meeting where we talk about what can't be done because <laughs> those are always like, <laughs> they also are kind of a drag because you're like trying to, you're trying to invent stuff. You know, you're having this problem with nothing into something like, okay, I got an idea. And someone says, that'll take three years, you can't do it. And you're like, oh, too, too, you know how hard that was to have that idea? Okay, I have to go do something. Okay. So, as much as I would like to talk about how we can't make this awesome game in time. <laughs> like, like, I, th I thought I was coming up with ways that we could. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Okay, I'll sneak out now. I'm going to check out the inventory stuff. Okay. Bye. Bye. Hey, Anna. Yeah? Can I see all that cool inventory stuff I missed? Huh? Everything? Yeah. Everything with we're just going to wind up shipping a game about a red bot and a fucking lumberjack. <laughs> Sorry, Tim. Uh, we decided to ship these instead. We ran out of time. We ran, we ran out of time. We did create all kind of like tech for it, but you know. <laughs> Beckers, it's up to you to make a game. Here's, here's a tool set. Do whatever you want. Yeah, I think there's always a point in the project where um, everything kind of gets real and, and you see the amount of work that you have in front of you. There was a, a bit of an eye opener just through the docs and the process as far as. Um, how much work is left and and how much we can we can do and the amount of time we have left um, it was uh, the eye opener that we needed to to get to the moment where we're like okay we need to start building this game and and we're getting to the point where uh, where yeah where now the real work is is beginning who is it like Miyamoto there's, there's that, that famous quote about it only it only hurts until it's done but if it sucks it sucks forever you know so like Okay, we'll suffer now, we'll put the extra work in to make this great, because no one's gonna remember, you know, no one ever says about a game, like, oh, you know, that game had a really reasonable production cycle. That was really, I really enjoyed that game. It was really moderately um, scheduled. This was our, our fourth milestone of 13, so um, we, uh, we need to start kind of pushing forward uh, and getting some, some content together if uh, we're gonna stay on track. I mean, often what I'm pushing for is like, we should just think about this problem longer because we're going to have a creative solution that's going to allow us to have the great thing that I want, but have it not take 20 years to put together. It'll take, we'll, we'll think of a cheap, you know, Lee and those guys are really smart and they could probably think of a clever way to, you know, cut the work in half and get it done. But it's hard to commit to that in advance. Like, okay, I'll have a clever idea and it'll cut those work in half because, you know, those things you don't know they're going to come, but they, they always come. that could do, you know, like, the menial tasks that nobody wants to do. Well, it's not even menial, like, I mean, one of my plans... Like